We doing mad today Ain't got time for no games We doing mad today All work and no play We doing mad today Hey hey stats Let's go over stats lesson 4.1 Randomness, probability <clears throat> And simulation What's our learning targets? Learning target number one We're going to interpret what probability is As a long term relative frequency Number two, we're going to dispel dispel some common myths, so so some lies about randomness. And number three, we're going to use uh, again your favorite um, part of math, simulation or technology to help us uh, model chance behavior. All right, let me switch my pens here. Chance is all around us. Uh, the mathematics of chance behavior is called probability. Uh, number two, chance behavior is unpredictable unpredictable in the short run, but has a regular predictable pattern in the long run. Number three, probability. I'm just going to read the definition. The probability of an, any outcome of a chance process is the number between zero and one. That describes the proportion of times that outcomes would occur in a very large uh, number of repetitions. Outcomes uh, that never occur have a probability of zero, and an outcome that happens on every repetition has a probability of one. An outcome that happens half the time in a very long series of trials has a probability of 0.5. We'll talk about a number line that might help you visually. And E, the fact that the proportion of heads and main tosses of the coin uh, eventually closes in on 0.5 is guaranteed by something called the law of large numbers. says that if we observe more and more repetitions of any chance process, the proportion of times that a specific outcome occurs approaches its probability. All right, so this box is what is the probability of what it is. And this one tells us it's a fraction, favorable outcomes over possible outcomes or all. Part over whole, right? That's what a fraction is. And then you have uh, the probability. Okay, so if you have um, heads or tails, let's say I want to get tossing a tossing heads. Well, you have the that's my <laughs> the heads, and this is the tail of the monkey. So there is there's how many of those? There's a head. There's a tail, and we just want heads. You're gonna make me draw that. Okay. So that means your probability is one over two. All right, let's just say you have a six-sided dice, and you want to roll a six. Well, To get the six, you know, there's six other um, numbers on the dice. You have a one, you have a two, three, four, five, and you have the six. So it is technically one over six. Okay? All right, let's just say you have a spinner. And on this spinner, there are, um, it's a pentagon. And we want to stop on, let's say, a color like purple. 
So you have red, yellow, uh, purple, green, and uh, blue. Right, five colors. So those are all your possible outcomes. Red, yellow, uh, purple, green, blue. And we're trying to get a purple. So that would be a one out of five. Or you can change it, you know, to a decimal uh, 0.2 or a 20% probability. Okay. All right. So from above, let me see. I can't reach it. Uh, we said a zero and a one. Well, here's my zero and here's my one. So a zero means it is impossible. And over here, it is certain. And of course, at 50 or 50%, you have an even chance. Then you might say something in between an even chance and certain. This is like uh, likely. Maybe you are likely to go to a four-year college or likely to take the Anaheim Pledge. Or you're like, oh, that one college I got, am eh, unlikely. My probability of going there is low. Another way of saying this is that there is no chance. And this is 100% chance. This is 50%, or this is what we call kind of like 50-50. It's 50% one way, 50% the other way. Uh, somewhere in there is 75, and then there's 25. All right. Page two, example 1A. Check for understanding. The probability is a measure of how likely an outcome is to occur. Match one of the probabilities that follow with each estimate. Be prepared to defend your answer. So basically what you're doing, you're just going to write some kind of number over here to the side. Uh, one of these five. And then press play when you're done. Okay, if the pos A, if this outcome is impossible, it can never occur, that would be a what? Zero. If it is, this outcome is certain, 100%, it will occur on every trial that is a one. This outcome is very unlikely, but it will occur um, once in a while. Oh, it, but it will occur only uh, once in a while in a long sequence of trials. I would say point zero one. And this outcome will occur more often than not. I think of those choices, that would be 0.6. So I didn't use those two. All right, let's try example 1B. According, no, we need to do the moon problem. Yes. Uh, was the moon landing real? We're going to be focusing on interpreting probability. According to the Book of Odds, the probability uh, that a randomly selected adult believes that the government staged or faked the Apollo landing in July 1969 is 0.06. Remember, quick lesson, this is um, 6 over, I moved the decimal two places, so that's 1, so this is uh, point. You already know that decimal. <laughs> 6%. That's what I wanted to write. Uh, uh, how do I write a 6 from this? 6%. Okay. Um, explain what probability of 0 0.06 means in this setting. It means if you took, or if you take a very large random sample of U.S. adults about 6% of them will be people who believe people who believe 
the government stage your fate the Apollo landing that's basically the first time the man was on the moon alright does this probability say that if 100 adults are chosen at random exactly I'm gonna highlight that word exactly six of them will believe the government stage or fake the Apollo landing um, explain the answer would be no Probability describes what? Describes what happens in many, many repetitions. In many, I'm going to say many again. And how many times would you have to do that? I'm saying way more than a hundred times. Of a chance process. So you can't just do it like only survey once 100 adults. You're going to have to survey like a hundred, a thousand, 10,000 times 100 adults. So you go to Washington State, 100 adults there. Nevada, 100 state, uh, adults there. Uh, Texas, 100. Then within, even within Texas, you have all those counties, and maybe for each county you keep doing that. Um, we would expect to get about, I'm going to highlight that word, about six people who believe the government stage or fate, which are there are theories out there, I guess for those people in the time, the Apollo moon landing in a random sample of 100 US adults. Does that make sense? The reason why we focused on six is it's not exactly. Sometimes, again, like you go to Florida and you might get like 20 of them. Or you go to another state and you might get um, Two of them, or you go to Maine and you might have zero, or you go to California and it might be like 80. But what we're trying to say is, if you take, if you kind of graphed it and you did a dot plot, the big idea is that six is gonna is gonna be here. This will be the after chance after chance. It's always gonna happen right there in that middle. Okay, so that's a. Um, a visual of kind of like where we're going and a definition of probability. Let's move on to uh, the next learning target here, which is to dispel common myths or lies about randomness. Myth number one, short run regularity. The biggest mistake in, is to apply the law of numbers to a small number of trials. Example, um, you know, it's 50, 50, 50% 50 to get a girl, um, and 50% to get a boy, right? Because you add those two outcomes together, 50 plus 50 is 100%, right? Certain. So, you know, if you get seven boys in a row, um, some people might think like, oh no, you're going to get a, another boy, or you're, you're due to get a, um, a girl, but that idea is wrong because you know you have to keep sampling. Keep you mean you need to increase the number of trials. Okay. The law of averages. Myth number two, the law of averages. This is a lie. So thinking that a hot hand for those who play sports, especially those who are trying to like make a basket, a goal, or something like that, that this will continue. So imagine a 
um, basketball player makes several shots in a row and the announcer says, oh, that person, she's got a hot hand, right? Um, will that continue on forever? No, we're saying if you keep going in long terms, we're looking at their shooting percentage or their field goal percentage. Coins, dice, cards, etc. have uh, no memory. Uh, example is in casinos they have something that has where you kind of roll a ball in there and then each of the alternative colors are um, red and one's black I think and um, you know maybe it keeps rolling black and then you can say oh red is due to come up and the answer would be no because you know the roulette anything has even chance this probability is going to be the long run Right. Okay, let's try this example here. Do for a win. So we're talking about beware of the law of averages. A player is uh, playing the game of craps. Uh, it's a car, I don't know, dice game. And needs to roll a sum of eight on two fair chances to win the game. So sum means plus, right? And then eight would be know four in each the player then rolls a sum of six seven ten ten and six on the next five consecutive rolls a spectator yells you're due for a win explain why this spectator is wrong well the spectator the fan his claim is based on the Law of averages. This player is just as likely to roll an eight on this uh, roll. as she was on any previous roll. So you couldn't say like, um, oh, it's gonna even out, or you haven't rolled an eight yet. Um, remember the idea that there is no memory. Dice have no memory. And later on, we're gonna figure out that the probability of actually rolling an eight, or we would say P, P8 would be uh, 5 out of 36 chances, which is a 13.9% uh, chance. Okay? Right, let's go on to um, learning target number 3. Now the next page here. Use simulation um, to model chance behavior. So again, this is like the um, somehow using a computer technology. We can model chance behavior and estimate probabilities with a uh, simulation. And we've actually talked about this before. A simulation is the imitation or replication or kind of like copying or cloning of chance behavior based on a model that accurately reflects the situation. So how can you um, perform a simulation? Almost think of it as um, uh, going into the future or um, you know if you go to um, Star Wars Star Wars tours at Disneyland those are called simulators they're kind of mimicking kind of like <clears throat> what would happen in real life okay so the first one is state so you're going through this, this process here state ask a question about some chance process. So I'm going to underline it is a question. Uh, B, plan. Describe how to use um, a chance device to imitate or one repetition of the process. Tell what you will record at the end of each repetition. And I'm going to put in here that during your planning time you want to do your dare. 
um, digits assign repeats and um, when do you end okay we've talked about there before C you're actually gonna do or perform many repetitions remember the technology is gonna help us and then at the end there you're going to um, have a conclusion Use the results of your simulation to help answer the question. All right, so let's try example number three, and we're going to be using our calculator here. Can you roll them all? A local charity is running a casino night fundraiser. One game called Roll Them All will pay out $5 on a $2 bet, so... You, you walk up there and you have to give them two dollars. If the player can roll ten fair dice and have all six dice, uh, all six numbers show face up. So all six numbers are like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, face up. Design and carry out a simulation to help the prob to estimate the probability that all the numbers one to six will show up face when rolling ten dice. If this game is played a thousand times, should the local charity expect to make money on this game? All right. So let's do our first part. So I'm going to be using this method right here. So let's state and make a question here. What's our question? What's the probability? probability that numbers 1 to 6 show face up when rolling 10 dice. Now, if you think about this, this can just be rolling um, 1 dice 10 times. Or you can have 10 dice one time. Six, I can't count. Seven, eight, 10. Does that make sense? So you can have one of these two options there. Okay, what's our, so we just did state. Let's do our plan. What's our plan? Our plan is, <clears throat> well, I'm going to use the uh, acronym digits. Not acronym digits. I'm going to use acronym DARE. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, so what are the digits I'm going to be using? Uh, we're going to use numbers 1 to 6 to um, simulate numbers on a dice. So for example, if the one comes up, then that is the one on the dice. If I, uh, the number gets a six on my graphing calculator, then that's essentially the six on a die. Okay, so how do we assign um, so each number represents a roll. So if I get 10 numbers, that's 10 rolls. Uh, what do we do about repeats? So, um, we're going to keep repeats. Because if I get like say three ones, that means on on the first roll that came out a one, and then the second roll one, and third one a one. And when do we end? When we have um, ten numbers. I also want to add in here. 
Um, this this is just one simulation, and you might want to repeat it. What does it tell us? Um, we might have to do it a thousand times. So do I really want to do this a thousand times? No. So I might want to do this. Um, repeat steps above um, 50 times. All right, so I'm going to do this maybe Um, let me make a chart here. Just see how much space I have. Let's do it over here. Okay, so I'm going to call this repetition uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, let's think about, get your graphing calculator. If you need to press pause, you can go ahead. And let's go ahead and... Um, Pull it up. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to show you the buttons and then we'll write it down. So I'm going to press math. And if you look at, there's at the very top, there's four options. There's math, number, uh, I think that's complex, and PRD, which is probability. So click on probability. And you're looking for number five, which says rant int, which is random integer. We're going to input three numbers, lower, upper, and the number of trials. So in this case, I'm going to, um, the lower is just number one, upper is six, and number of trials will be ten. Okay, And it kind of tells you a formula there. So it'll be rand in parentheses, number, comma, so one, comma, six, comma, ten, close the parentheses. What's nice about this one, or if you have a physical calculator, you can press... Um, you know, you can press, um, I don't know, that little information bar. And the older calculators will have um, that middle purple column there, rand int, and then 10, 200. Like, that one can only pick one number. So it's basically just pick one number between 100 and 200, and you get 126, and you have to keep pressing enter. Okay, so I'm actually going to press the arrow now. So 1, 6 comma 10 okay close parenthesis and now every time I press enter it's gonna roll the dice kind of six times if that makes sense okay let me get my phone so I can take a picture of this okay that's one roll and we said we're gonna do it um, just for our sakes we're just gonna do it five times not 50 but in the the planning we said we were gonna do it 50 times two three okay I can only fit three let me take a picture four, five. Okay, I got my numbers. Let me go back to our notes. Um, let's write the calculator commands. So we went to math, probability, um, Ran integer, and we did um, one comma six comma ten. Okay, let me write down all these numbers. <coughs> so six three five five six two three five two four. Okay. Let's just say, let's just see if this was a uh, winner or not. Okay, remember, I need all the numbers one through six. Do I have all the numbers one through six there? That would be a no. So I paid two dollars, we rolled ten dice, I didn't get all the numbers one through six, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I am a loser on that one. Okay, let's do next one three, four, three, four, six, six, four, five, one, four. Uh, winner or loser? That one is a loser, no two, right? 
All right, let's try the next one. One, two, one, five, one, three, one, one, six, two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm missing a four, so loser again. <clears throat> this is good because we the charity is trying to win money, right? So they only win money if people don't get a winner. Does that make sense? I don't want to have to pay out $5. I want people to keep paying. Hey, keep paying this $2, and they keep losing money. All right, so our next set of numbers... Uh, four, six, four, two, four, four, three, six, two, five. Okay. Oh man, we are not doing well. There, no one. Okay, and then, um, let's not, I, we're doing it five times. And then the last one, four, five, three, six, two, three, five, six, one, six. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. We got a winner. Okay. So basically, this is what you would do for. Um, this is what you would do, like. A lot of times. Does that make sense? And and what you can do, I want to point this out, is you can make a um, you can make a uh, you can make a number line zero one two three four five six and let me see if I can color code this. Okay, so like say for um, Repetition number one, how many of the six numbers did you get? Well, we we're missing a one, so you got five out of six. So you would put a blue, like a dot plot. Let's try a different one, so like purple. Repetition number two. Um, one, you're missing a two, three, four. So again, we got five. And then, um, yellow. Does this make sense what I'm kind of doing here? I'm trying to show you like, one, two, three, four, uh, what's happening. But then we can figure out based on the dot plot how, let's do one more. Let's do orange. Okay, in this one, I got uh, no one. Two, three, four, five, six, okay, five of them. And um another color, which color we're not used. Let's do pink. Okay, this one we got all six. Alright, so we have state plan. Um I'm going to do some magic. There's my magic. Okay, why did I do that? Because I wanted to say that was our do part. So this was all the doing. And then my last one I need is a conclusion. So let's just say you actually do this in one simulation, you know, 50 repetitions. So let's, let's just write something in one set. In one set of 50 repetitions of the simulation. All 
all six numbers were shown. Again, we didn't do all this, but let's, we're just saying what happens if we did, you know, press enter, you know, 50 times, maybe in, shown in maybe 15 trials. I didn't want to do all of them, but we did five trials. Let's write that. Five trials, right? That's the five numbers, and that represents also the five dots. Whoops. Five dots. So we can say the estimated probability that all six numbers shown rolling 10 dice is 15 out of 50 which gives us about 0.30 okay so what happens if we did this over 1000 rolls in 1000 rolls the charity can expect um, 0.30 times 1000 would give us um, 300 winners. But of the thousand, that means 300 are winners, and then that would be uh, 1,000 minus 300 would give us 700 losers. So, um, if we gain, or if they gain two dollars per per the 1,000 games. So that would be uh, two times 1,000 would give us um, for a total of $2,000. So that's our profit. It would cost five dollars um, for each 300 winners so my math on that one is going to be uh, five times 300 would give us how much for a total of fifteen hundred dollars Charity would expect a profit of how much? Two thousand minus fifteen hundred would give us uh, five hundred dollars after one thousand games played. So they know Mr. Ring rolls up to this charity and they're like, hey, you don't, should we actually offer the numbers? Will this work? And I would say, yes. As a mathematician, statistician, we figured out using simulation that yes, this would be profitable. Keep doing this game. Because every thousand games that are played, um, we expect to win 500 bucks. There's a profit. If it was a negative, then I would tell them, don't do it. Okay, next page, example number four, you do it all and then press play and I'll have all the answers and I'll explain it. Question number four, New Jersey Transit claims that in, at its 8 a.m. train from Princeton to New York has a probability of 0.9 of arriving on time. Soon for now that this claim is true. Explain what probability 0.9 means in this setting. If you take a very large random sample of the 8 a.m. Princeton to New York trains, about 90% of them will be on time. Okay, uh, 4B. The 8 a.m. train has arrived 
on time five days in a row. What's the probability that that will arrive on time? I'm going to highlight this one. This one is tomorrow, the next one. Explain. The probability that the train will be on time tomorrow is still 0.9. The short run of on-time train trains does not change the probability that the next train will be on time. That will be on time. Now, in the future, not to get confused, uh, we can figure out the probability of what's the probability of um, three trains that are exactly on time for three straight days. Does that make sense? Or at least three days. But this one is specifically just the next outcome tomorrow. Okay, businessman takes the 8 a.m. train to work on 20 days in a month. <clears throat> he is surprised when the train arrives late in New York on three of the 20 days. Should he be surprised? Describe how you would carry out a simulation to estimate the probability that the train would arrive late on three or more of 20 days in New Jersey's transit's claim is true. Do not perform the simulation. Okay, so to carry out a simulation, we, we're going to do our um, uh, SPDAC. That would be the state plan do and conclusion okay and it kind of already stated for us what we're trying to figure out we're trying to figure out what is the probability it's late on three or more of the 20 days okay so that's my state my plan is to use dare digits is the i'm going to use the numbers one through nine or basically the numbers one through ten and how do i assign it well above i already said that numbers one through nine will be on time and the number 10 will be a train that's late. Um, for repeats, I'm actually one to keep a repeat. Why? Because if I said, you know, if I get three ones in a row, that just basically means on time, on time, on time. When will this end? Well, I'm gonna use random integer one comma 10 comma 20 on the TI-83 and press enter 20 times and I'm gonna record the number of trains that are late, okay? So it doesn't actually want me to, to perform the simulation. Like, don't go and, into your calculator and press that. Get a color I haven't used. That's a bad yellow. What do you guys think? Okay. The dot plot shows the number of days on which the train arrived late in 100 repetitions of the simulation. So basically, remember, every time you press enter on your calculator, um, that is a one repetition. And... This right here, the, the dot plot has 100 of them. What is the res what is the resulting estimate of the probability described in question number three? <clears throat> Should the businessman be surprised? Well, this is the do part now. Do part, do do. <clears throat> Our train probability is one. That's what we learned at the beginning of the lesson. And if it's on time 90% of the time, that means it's late 10% uh, of the time. 0.9 plus 0.1 equals 1.0, right? 90% plus 10% equals the 100%. <clears throat> so we have this dot plot here. And each dot, <clears throat> let's kind of make this painfully obvious, one dot is equal to um, this 20. What happened when I pressed it and it gave me 20 numbers? I don't know if that makes sense. So basically there's 100 trials <coughs> and imagine pressing on your calculator 100 times. Although above, you might asking why did I do 20? I didn't want to do 100, but this next question said 100. Does that make sense? So each dot represents kind of 20 numbers and in those 20 numbers, we're looking at those numbers and um, if it has the number 10 on it, then it was considered um, late, right? Because 10 equals late. So this dot right here, in this column, this represents that when I pressed <coughs> um, 1, 10, 20, and in those 20 numbers, there were zero 10s. There were zero late trains. Does that make sense? And then this pink dot over here, when I press random integer 1, 10, 20, it picked 20 numbers for me. And of those 20 numbers, 
Um, only two of them were tens, which means two trains were late. Okay, so that's what the dot plot represents. So, um, so that would be kind of like <clears throat> going against the businessman's thinking. But the businessman said, "Well, I have." Um, that's weird. I took it 20 times and it was late three times. So over here, let me see if I can pick a different color. This is going against the businessman or supporting his claim. <clears throat> He's saying, you know, I think the orange is, is normal. And we're trying to provide evidence against that. So in this orange dot, <clears throat> when we ran the simulation, um, you know, 1, 10, 20 gives us 20 numbers. And of the 20 numbers, four of them were tens, which means that it was late <clears throat> four times. And if you count out all these dots, you have, in our simulation, uh, 30. So over here, to estimate the probability that a train is late on three or more, of the 20 days is 30 out of 100 of those dots. So we have a probability of uh, 30%. What's my conclusion? There is no, there is no or not convincing evidence that the train company's claim is false. The businessman should not be surprised as these results could easily have occurred purely by chance. Now, <clears throat> some people are asking me some questions like, you might have a question like, when is it convincing evidence? Or when is it statistically significant? Um, up here, I just put in uh, white there, less than 5% is convincing evidence. Okay. All right, let's review what we've done. We need to interpret the probability as a long-term uh, relative frequency. So we should be able to see this over many trials. Number Learning target number two, there are a bunch of myths or lies about randomness. We've talked about those. It's not the hot hand, right? You can't just say it. You, need, you can do it also in short trials. And number three, we use technology to uh, simulate the model of chance behavior. And that is lesson uh, 4.1. See you guys. We doing mad today. Ain't got time for no games. We doing mad today. All work and no play. We doing mad today. Listen up and behave. We doing math today. We doing math today.